tried a lot of fried chicken in my life. And in my experience, making it at home, these three incredible liquids make for the most unbelievable, tender, delicious chicken. There's no time to waste, my friends. Now let's go. Boom. All right, we're starting with a whole chicken here. Let's break this thing down. So I like to go make a little slit here, just between the thigh and the breast. And then what you can do is just pop that out. The chicken was in the freezer and then thawed out for a couple hours, so it's still a little bit frozen. And then we wanna come back here and get the oyster off with it. See this little piece right here? There's the joint right here. I'm gonna really need to try to break it a little bit. There we go. Just get that off. That's one thigh. Now we do the same thing on the other side. Now usually you're gonna hear the joint pop when you do this, right? But because it's still pretty frozen, I'm having a little trouble getting that, but that's all right. We'll just do this other side, straight back there. There we go, slice through, that's off. There's our two legs and thighs. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and flip that over. I like to keep a towel here to keep my hands from getting too slippery. And I wanna get off this whole wing since we're making fried chicken. So we'll slice in a little bit and then you can do the same thing. See, I'm, I'm just bending that wing and it's exposing the joint right here. And then we'll just slice around that wing out and we'll just do the exact same thing on this other side. So when you're doing a chicken, remember slice and pull. You're doing that with the legs and the wings and it's pretty simple. Now flip it back up. And because that wishbone is sitting right here, right? It's in the way of slicing out the breast. So I'm just gonna take a little boning knife here and we wanna expose that meat under there. So we're gonna have to flip back that little bit of neck skin that was covering. So I'm just gonna find the top of this wishbone right here. And I'm gonna just guide my knife first around the outside of it, making two cuts like this, a little V cut, and then around the top. And then we're just gonna go on the inside of it as well. And you'll just feel it with the knife, right? Now we should be able to probably, oh, she's frozen. She's frozen good, there we go. We get in there with a towel, make it easier there. Bam, and there's our wishbone out, got it in one piece flip that skin back. Generally, you're gonna see people use the boning knives for this kind of job, but I actually prefer using a slicer. It's got the biggest edge on this one side. So I'm just gonna find the middle bone with my fingers here, and then we'll just slice, trying to get as close to that, I forget what the bone is called, but this middle bone, right in its chest, right? We're gonna get as close to that as we can. We can slice through there, and then we're just sliding under, right? And then I'll come around here, I'll get this side, slide it right under. It's still a little bit frozen, that's why it's making this a little more difficult for me, but it's all right, there we go. Pop that breast out. Whoop. See, this is like frozen solid hard, which is making it a little bit more difficult for me. Usually it will be much easier if you wanna let it thaw out a little bit more, but working with a very cold chicken can only make it a lot easier for you. So that is something I did on purpose. It's just, as I said, a little too frozen. So there's our breasts, our legs, and our wings. Now the last thing we wanna do is simply just to separate the leg from the thigh. It can be a little bit difficult sometimes to find this joint, but you can sort of feel it in there first and just slice through, and you might have to like go a little left or a little right like this, right? Right? Is, there, is that it? There it is. Sometimes it takes a second to find it. There it is, let's do the other one. Might be easier to start from this side. Slice in, there she is. Boom, right there. And so you'll just feel that with your knife. And then we've separated those. And the last thing I'm gonna do, because I'm making fried chicken with this, this breast is just kind of, it's huge, right? So what I'm gonna do, Take a couple layers of cling film here so it doesn't splatter all over the place. And I'm just gonna bash it out a little bit. And I'm just thinking about the next step, which is frying it, right? Well, after it marinates, obviously, in the three mystery liquids. But let's just bash it out. Don't have to go too crazy, but I'm just evening it out a little bit. It's good enough for me. See, it's just much more one thickness now, right? And then I'm just gonna slice these in half, just like so. Same with the other one. I am. Now the carcass. Don't throw away the carcass, right? Let's make stock with that. Just a simple chicken stock to have around in your house. And of course you could chop this into a bunch of pieces with a cleaver that will give you more surface area, more browning, kind of more flavor. But you're definitely gonna splatter chicken all around your kitchen. If you can find a way just to break it up a little bit. Oh, yeah. Man, it makes it very primal just doing that with your hands. I'll tell you what, very primal. Liver King would like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, ah. Ah! <sighs> Okay, wow, that was pretty amazing. So, now you have much less splatter, right? I, I don't see very much splatter around me at all. Now we're gonna roast this off. I'm just gonna throw my hand-ripped chunks into a pot here, wishbone going in for good luck. Washing my hands. Putting a little touch of neutral oil on here. Just gonna give that a little mix. And then we're gonna take some of my famous homemade seasoning, which is just rosemary salt. I'll put a link to that video in the corner. I'll also post the recipe in the description. It's amazing. And we'll just sprinkle this on. This is gonna add a beautiful flavor to our stuff. Now we're just gonna roast this off in a 400 degree oven. Okay, my friends, here's the holy trinity of fried chicken brine. I learned this at a restaurant where they made pressure fried chicken. It was like their main thing. Buttermilk, 
pickle juice, and Frank's Red Hot. Now, if you're not a Frank's fan, I just don't, I don't, I don't get you, first of all, but you can use whatever kind of hot sauce you love, right? And so it's basically three cups of buttermilk, two cups of pickle juice, and one and a half cups of Frank's Red Hot. I'm telling you, this is the bee's knees. People still say that? I don't know, I'm bringing it back. So, just get that all into a bowl. Oh, yes. <laughs> and the last thing I'm gonna add here is just a little smoked paprika. I really love that smoky flavor getting into the chicken. Just give this a nice mix. Oh man, that already just smells so freaking good. This is some kind of magical concoction for chicken. I'm telling you, it's gonna make it so tender, so flavorful. Now, let's just drop all our chicken in here. Yes, yes, get in there. Don't forget the wings. Wow, and there we go. Pop a lid on it, and it's going into the fridge for a full 24 hours. If you want the full magic, magic of this recipe, go for a full 24 hours. If you wanna make it on the same day, I would be okay with you doing it for six to eight hours. So start it in the morning and then cook it in the late afternoon kind of thing. But I am letting this magic go to work. So into the fridge. All right, I just roasted this for 35 minutes. Got a nice golden brown color going on. I'm not putting too much work into this. I just don't wanna waste this chicken. Just gonna add some water to this, simple as that. Should be nicely seasoned from all that rosemary salt, right? So water in and then just use what you have as far as vegetables. I had one little carrot and I had some onions. I don't have any celery. So that's what I'm gonna do. I might throw some peppercorns, a little bit of thyme in there later, but I'm just gonna put this back on the stove and let it simmer away for about one hour, strain it out and now you have chicken stock, which is a good thing to have. Okay, now for your flour dredge. I have all purpose flour, rice flour, potato flour. Now I know a lot of you might not have rice or potato flour. You can sub that with cornstarch or you can just do all flour. Then we got some mustard powder, paprika, rosemary salt. You could also just use kosher salt, black pepper, and onion powder. That is the dredge. And let me tell you something, it works. We're just gonna dump all of this into a bowl. Spice is in, and I'll just give that a nice whisk. There's our dredge done. Now the chicken has done a full 24 hours, but what I did is just pull this out of the fridge an hour ago. So it's not super cold by the time we fry it, right? That's a good trick. Now here we go, starting with a thigh. Gonna let that drip for a second into the flour. Really takes some good time here to coat it up nicely. Now check this out, same piece of chicken. We're gonna dip it again in the buttermilk, just briefly. Put some of my brine into this squeeze bottle. Here's a little trick to get extra batter. You don't have to do this, but we're just gonna go like this and create some little beads right there. And so then when we dip this in, it's just gonna create extra texture on that side. And what we can do here is even put a little more and then sprinkle some of this flour on top. Yes. And so as I turn that over, you could see it picked up all these little beads, right? That brine is now sticking to the edge with extra little floury bits, just making for a more crunchy experience. You just really wanna shake this off nicely, set it over here on a rack. I'm gonna do it again with a breast and you can even do a little bit like this. This is another way to do it. So this is for both sides and we can just dip it down like that. Tap, tap, tap a root, flip over to that other side. And it'll really good, do a good job of picking most of it up too. And here we go. I mean, that is gonna make for some super fried chicken. And just repeat this process with all your pieces. Again, you don't have to do this extra bit. If you like less breading, maybe only dredge it once instead of twice. But I like doing this. Tappy tappy and on the rack. All right, and there is all our fried chicken dredged. Now something I've found about dredging really any foods is letting it sit on the meat for about 30 minutes before cooking. So here's my theory. I don't know, I'm not a scientist, but like all that moisture from the chicken is now leaching out into the breading. And I can just see how it's changing and getting these ripples and it just looks a little bit more drier and beautiful and, and for me this just makes that dredge stick to the outside that much better and in my experience when you let it sit for 30 minutes after dredging much less of this coating is going to come off into your oil so your oil is not going to get as messed up which is also really nice so now we wait. Since we're frying at home, we don't have a huge amount of oil. I'm gonna bring it up to like 335. And that will be the temperature we use for the thighs as well as the drumsticks. Since they take the longest, we're gonna start with those. And I think you can now really see how that coating has stuck to the edges after resting. All right, here we go. In she goes, two thighs, two legs. And I'm not gonna put in any more than that. Now all we wanna do is turn the heat down, right? I had a full blast just because I was setting those in. We wanna maintain 320, which we're looking perfect. And so these were some pretty big thighs. I'm probably gonna do these for about 12 minutes. The drumsticks, maybe nine or 10, and it should be done. So we'll just pull those out a little bit early. Simple as that. All right, I just have another rack here on a sheet pan. And after 10 minutes, my drumsticks should be done. Tell me that doesn't look so crunchy. Woo! And with all these pieces of fried chicken, this needs a good seven, eight minute rest. Even a little longer can be good. And since my thighs are so huge, I'm gonna let them go for a couple more minutes, actually. I just feel that's necessary. Might do these for about 14 minutes, 13 minutes. 
And you can always just poke a thermometer inside, make sure it's hitting 165. And with our chicken that comes out of the fryer, I think it's always a good idea to just hit it with a little bit of salt right away. I mean, that can only do it a lot of good. And there's our thigh. I mean, gosh, how good does that look, right? Okay, I brought it to 355 to compensate for that temperature drop. And we'll go in with some breasts and some wings. And these should take just around eight minutes at that 340 temperature. So these have been going for about eight minutes now. And I'm finding because I put a lot of extra dredge on, th these chickens just need a little more time than I predicted. You know, if you're using a really small chicken, the eight minutes might be good. But this was a bigger chicken. He'd been working out or whatever. So, so I'm gonna do these for about 10 minutes just to be sure they're done. All right, breasts done after 10. And again, I'm just hitting this all with a little salt when it comes out. All right, just gonna cook the rest of my breasts. And also these little tenders I pulled off from the breasts. I'm really looking forward to those. Same deal, 10 minutes on the breasts, probably six, seven minutes on those tenders. And there's our glorious fried chicken, my friends. Wow, what a feast. We've got our thighs up here, our drumsticks, our wings, our chicken breasts, and our tenders. Boom, that's the kit. How many pieces is that? Four, four, four. 12, that's a 12 piece chicken. Yes, yes. And so as I was frying this, I just had my oven on 300 degrees. And so I kind of kept it warm in there as I was frying it all, especially the drumsticks and the thighs. That little bit of extra he can only do them a lot of good and because of the batter we use this stuff I mean you can hear it it's just it is so freaking crispy still so don't worry about losing your crunch let's taste it all right I'm going straight for a thigh as that is my favorite piece oh right in the water dispenser oh you know what else I was excited about for some reason this tender oh come on this is incredible fried chicken no joke Ugh. This is my kitchen! And then the fridge like animation falls into a bottomless pit. That would be cool. Now I'm gonna go watch the UFC and eat this kitchen. <laughs> kitchen, eat the kitchen. Now I'm gonna watch the UFC and I'm gonna eat this chicken. Now you know the deal, my friends. If you got some value from this video, just please drop me a like, leave a comment if you so wish, and turn on notifications if you wanna be a psycho. That would be cool. And until next time, my sweet friends, you know I love you and I'm out.